Apple canceled iPadOS 16.0 and they didn't say why. Now after more than a month, iPadOS 16.1 is finally here. What took them so long? Apple said this is a big year for iPadOS and they wanted to get it right. Did they? Not exactly. There are a lot of exciting new features, but it's not perfect and some settings will drain your battery and slow your iPad to a crawl. But first, let's talk about the new feature we think is responsible for delaying iPadOS 16 for so long. Apple says Stage Manager is a whole new way to multitask. Well, that's true. You can have up to four apps open at the same time and eventually up to eight with an external display, but it's clunky. If you want to try it and you have a newer iPad, open settings, scroll down and tap home screen and multitasking, then tap stage manager and turn on the switch next to use stage manager on iPad. When we turn it on, we see two things change. The window resize handle appears in the lower right hand corner of the screen and three dots appear in the top center of the screen. We recommend unchecking recent apps and dock, which hides them by default, but you can still access them. You can open the dock by swiping up from the bottom of the screen and open recent apps by swiping in from the left side of the screen. Having them both on the screen all the time takes up too much real estate. The idea behind Stage Manager is that your recent apps live over here on the left and you can drag them on and off the screen. Then you can resize them, move them around, and tap to switch between them. Swipe it on the bottom of the screen, switch between your recent apps. Or are these stages? I'm not sure. In swiping up to open the app switcher, it gives you a bunch of different weird shapes and sizes. I'm so confused. We can see why Apple delayed iPadOS 16 for Stage Manager. After trying it out for a while, we're just deciding to turn it off. It's still a little clunky and it's confusing to use. And although it may be a whole new way to multitask, that doesn't mean it's good. Let's go back into settings and turn off Stage Manager. If you plan on using Stage Manager, we recommend adding the Stage Manager control to Control Center. Yeah, let's tap on Control Center in Settings, scroll down to the Stage Manager control and tap that green plus button. Now, if we open up Control Center, we've got that Stage Manager button we can toggle on or off. While we're here, let's talk about Control Center. This is where you can choose which buttons appear in Control Center on your iPad. One control we love is the hearing control. When you're listening to something on your iPad, this control will show you the decibel levels, allowing you to make sure they aren't reaching a level that's bad for your hearing. And if you're concerned about blowing out your eardrums, turn on this next setting we don't really agree on. In settings, tap sounds, and then tap reduce loud sounds at the top of the screen and turn that switch on. I turn it on just because I can never remember where I left the volume slider the last time I was listening to music. I leave it off. I think it's a great feature for children, but I'm an adult. I can monitor my own volume on my iPad. Here's something we can agree on. Apps are great, but the default app store settings, not so much. In settings, scroll down and tap on app store and then turn off the switch next to app downloads underneath automatic downloads. When this is on, every app you download on your iPad gets downloaded on all your other Apple devices. There are certain apps like Simply Piano I only want to have installed on my iPad. All they'll do on my iPhone is take up unnecessary storage space. It's also a good idea to turn off in-app content. When this is on, apps get to run in the background to download new content before you open them for the first time. It's a battery drainer. Games like Genshin Impact are already huge, and after you start to play them on your iPad, you have to download a whole bunch of new content anyways. Next, we're gonna tap on Video Autoplay. When this is on, your iPad automatically plays app preview videos in the App Store. Your iPad uses battery life, automatically playing videos that you don't wanna watch. Let's turn that off. The next setting is in-app ratings and reviews. When you turn this off, you'll see fewer pop-ups and apps asking you for five-star reviews. Let's tap back to App Store and then turn off the switch next to in-app ratings and reviews. Can't reviews that tip. And while we're on the topic of apps, let's make sure you're not spending money on subscriptions that you no longer use. On the left-hand side of the screen, we'll scroll up and tap on your name at the top of the screen, then tap subscriptions. Here you'll see a list of subscriptions connected to your iCloud account. To cancel subscription, tap on that subscription and then tap cancel. Let's tap back to the previous page, David. What I do every time I sign up for one of these services is I immediately go in and cancel the subscription. Why do you do that? If I don't watch Disney Plus on October 25th this month and then I reactivate it the 26th, I just got a free day. Sneaky. Next, tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, tap on name, phone numbers, and email, and then turn off the switches underneath the subscriptions. By turning these switches off, you won't receive Apple marketing communications, AKA spam, or the Apple News newsletter. And there's another setting buried in here. Tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, then tap media and purchases. Tap view account, 
and then turn off the switch next to personalized recommendations. This cuts down on the data your iPad sends to Apple that they then use to try to sell you stuff. We're going to talk about more ways Apple collects your data and how you can stop them, but first we need to talk about a setting that can really slow down your iPad. Let's tap done, upper right hand corner of the screen, then scroll down on the left and tap on Safari. Then scroll down and tap close tabs. When close tabs is set to manually, you could end up with hundreds of tabs open. I've been there. And when you have that many tabs open, your iPad can get a lot slower. I like to set this to after one month, if I'm not going back to a web page after a month, I'm just never going to get to it. There are two other Safari settings you need to turn off. Tap back to the main Safari settings page, scroll down, and turn off the switch next to privacy preserving ad measurement. This setting should just be called ad measurement. When you turn it off, it doesn't mean that your privacy isn't preserved. It means there won't be any ad measurement, even the kind that preserves your privacy. Next, we're gonna scroll up and turn off the switch next to preload top hit. This setting exists because Apple is so sure you're going to load the first result to Google search that Apple loads the page in the background so it opens faster. And if you don't click on that first result, your iPad just uses a little bit of battery life downloading something you're never going to read. This next setting is also going to cut down on unnecessary battery drain. On the left-hand side of the screen, tap mail, then tap accounts, then tap fetch new data. When push is on at the top, your iPad maintains a connection to the email server, so it's constantly checking to see if there's new mail. With fetch, you decide how often your iPad checks to see if there's new mail. Let's turn off the switch next to push at the top of the screen, then choose your fetch interval I like every 30 minutes. That alone will save you a lot of battery life. And your iPad will automatically fetch new mail anytime you open the mail app. If that's not the only mail setting you might wanna change. Let's tap back to accounts, back to the main page of mail, scroll down, and tap on undo send delay. By default, when you send an email using the mail app, you have 10 seconds to unsend it. And that might not be enough time for you. I set this to 30 seconds. I don't use this feature often, but when I make a mistake, I wanna have as much time as possible to correct it. Next, let's tap back to mail, then tap blocked sender options and select move to trash. Do you really wanna see emails in your inbox from people you've blocked? I know I don't. Next, let's talk about a couple extremely important settings that protect the data on your iPad. On the left-hand side of the screen, we're gonna scroll up and tap general, then tap software update, then tap automatic updates. Make sure the switch next to security responses and system files is on. This was added in iPadOS 16, you should leave it on. Without the latest rapid security responses, your iPad is ripe for the hacking. That's bad. Next, we're gonna scroll up on the left-hand side of the screen and tap Wi-Fi, then tap on Auto Join Hotspot and set that to never. You don't want your iPad joining random personal hotspots, and you don't know what someone else is gonna do if they have access to your internet history. This next tip is for your privacy too and to help prevent your friends from seeing your notifications. So let's tap Notifications, tap Screen Sharing, and then turn off Allow Notifications. Turning this off stops notifications from appearing when you're using SharePlay or mirroring your screen. The last thing you want is for an embarrassing notification to appear while you're showing off photos to your friends. While we're here in Notifications, let's tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen and take a look at the list of your apps. When you allow an app to send you notifications, you're giving that app permission to keep running in the background of your iPad so that if something important happens, like you get a text message, you get notified right away. Notifications are good, but they do drain battery life, so it's important to be selective. If you see an app that doesn't need to send you notifications, like Airbnb, especially if you're not planning a trip, tap on it, then turn off the switch next to allow notifications at the top of the screen. As a bonus, turning off notifications will help you get distracted less by your iPad. Our next tip also helps cut down on the amount of apps running in the background of your iPad. On the left-hand side of the screen, let's tap General, then tap Background App Refresh. Go through your list of apps, choose which ones you want to allow to download new content in the background of your iPad. When apps use Background App Refresh, they use battery, so really be selective and only leave it on for the apps that absolutely need it, like a messaging app or a Maps app. This next iPad feature is unnecessary in any circumstance. On the left-hand side of the screen, scroll down and tap Camera, then tap Preserve Settings and turn on the switch next to Live Photo. We get a lot of comments from people who say they hate live photos and want to turn them off for good. Turning this switch on preserves the live photo setting you select instead of defaulting back to on anytime you open the camera app. But you do have to turn it off the first time. Let's open up the camera app and then turn off the Live Photo button by tapping it. It says Live Off at the top of the screen. From now on, live photos will only turn on if you turn them on. Next, let's talk about a really helpful new iPadOS 16 feature. We're gonna head back to the settings app on your iPad, scroll up and tap on accessibility, then scroll down 
and tap Siri, and then take a look at Siri pause time. Sometimes I'll use Siri to send a message and then pause to gather my thoughts, and she stops listening to me. When you change this setting, you can have Siri wait longer before she cuts you off. Select your pause time. If you keep getting cut off, try selecting longest. There are two more important battery tips here in accessibility. Let's tap back to accessibility, upper left-hand corner of the screen, scroll up, and tap on display and text size, and then scroll down to reduce white point. Reduce white point reduces the intensity of bright colors on your iPad. I like to think of this as kind of recalibrating the brightness slider on your iPad. It also makes for more pleasurable experience when you're binge watching a serial killer documentary at 3 a.m. So if we turn on the switch next to reduce white point, by default it's set to 50, you can see the display gets a little bit darker. And if you keep dragging the slider to the right, the display will get darker and darker and darker. David's a 75% person, I'm a 50% guy, but we're gonna turn it off for the rest of this video. One below reduced white point is auto brightness, and Apple says turning off auto brightness may affect battery life. People run into trouble when they leave their iPad at a high brightness all day. We have this off because we're recording a video, but you should turn it on. Whether you're recording a video or not, you'll probably wanna turn on this next setting. On the left-hand side of the screen, we're gonna scroll up and tap on focus and take a look at the share across devices switch. When you turn Turn on Do Not Disturb on your iPad. Do you also want it to turn on Do Not Disturb on your iPhone, Mac, other Apple devices? I leave this off on my iPad because otherwise my iPhone gets silenced and then I end up missing important calls. If you're like David, turn off the switch next to share across devices. Otherwise, leave it on, keep all your devices in sync. Sharing is caring. And if you're still here, we would love if you'd share our video with your friends. Just click the share button below the video. Let's talk about everyone's favorite iPad accessory, the Apple Pencil. On the left-hand side of the screen, tap Apple Pencil, we have a couple things we wanna point out. First, choosing what happens when you double tap your Apple Pencil. If you're doing mostly writing, we recommend switch between current tool and eraser. If you're doing a lot of drawing, we recommend switch between current tool and last used because that would give you the ability to switch between a pencil and a pen if you're drawing a sketch, for instance. Second, leave scribble on, but make sure you do that tutorial first, otherwise you won't learn everything you can do. It worked. Keep in mind that Scribble will not accommodate your bad handwriting. And before you finish that angry comment about how the Magic Keyboard is your favorite iPad accessory, we've got some tips for you too. There's no escape key on the Magic Keyboard, but there is a solution. You can make the caps lock key the escape key. On the left-hand side of the screen, tap General, tap Keyboard, and then tap Hardware Keyboard. Then tap Modifier Keys, and so for Escape, you could just tap in there, make it caps lock. There are a couple of interesting trackpad settings too. Let's tap back to the main general page in settings. Then one below keyboard is trackpad, tap on that. A lot of people like tap to click. Let's turn that switch on. If you're one of those PC people who think that when you swipe down on the trackpad, the page should also actually go down, then you should turn off natural scrolling. I drank the Kool-Aid a long time ago. I'm all in on natural scrolling. And I'm also naturally hesitant to give big tech companies the ability to track me across other apps and websites. How's that for a transition? On the left-hand side of the screen, tap privacy and security, and then tap tracking at the top of the screen. Here you'll see a list of apps that have asked to track you across other apps and websites. Sites. You can pick and choose which apps are allowed to track you, but we just recommend turning off the switch at the top of the screen. Tap ask apps to stop tracking, and now no apps can even ask to request a track in the future. Let's tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, and here's where you get to pick and choose which apps have access to your contacts, your photos, your microphone. Let's start by asking the question, which apps do you want to allow access to your photos? Well, if we tap on photos, we can see that Facebook currently has access to all the photos on this iPad. That's too much access. Access. So if we tap on Facebook, we can do selected photos, and that way only the photos that you pick and choose can be uploaded to Facebook. We recommend going through this process for all of the features you see in this section of settings. After you've done that, scroll down and tap on analytics and improvements and turn off all the iPad analytics switches. iPad analytics collects data about how you use your iPad and send it to Apple. It's not really a privacy concern, but it can use your battery. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen. Next, let's tap on Apple advertising and turn off personalized ads. People say you won't see fewer ads, but that might not be true. By turning off this switch, you become a less valuable advertising target. If companies don't know what your interests are, they won't pay to show you an ad. If they don't pay, you don't see an ad. You don't have to worry about seeing low quality ads either. That's because Apple doesn't allow low quality ads into their ad network. If they did, it could backfire and cost them billions of dollars. That's our sales pitch. Turn this switch off. Next, we're gonna tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, scroll up, 
and tap on location services. Here you'll see a list of apps and how often they can access your location. Location services are some of the biggest iPad battery drainers. The more often your iPad checks to see where you are, the more it uses your battery. Let's start by tapping share my location. If you have family sharing and you're sharing your location all the time, that's going to drain your battery. So if you have the option, turn off your family members. Tap back upper left hand corner of the screen and look through a list of apps. The big word to look out for here is always. So right now Zillow always has access to this iPad's location. Is that necessary? No, it is not. So if we tap on Zillow, select while using the app. And if it's not a navigation app like Apple Maps or Google Maps, Turn off the switch next to precise location. The more precise your iPad hones in and where you are, the more battery it uses. Let's tap back upper left hand corner of the screen and then tap on system services. We're gonna recommend turning off most of these switches. Turn off everything except emergency calls and SOS, find my iPad, motion calibration and distance, and share my location if it's a feature you use. If you don't, go ahead and turn it off. Next up, let's tap on significant locations. If you've had this feature on, you'll be seeing a list of all the places you've been most recently. It's pretty creepy. And also a battery drainer. And if your iPad were to fall into the wrong hands and someone got access to that list, they'd be able to see where you've been most recently. Just turn this off. Tap that switch at the top of the screen. Let's tap back to system services, top of the screen, underneath product improvement, iPad analytics. You thought you turned that off, you didn't and routing and traffic, turn that switch off as well. And then at the bottom of the screen, turn on the status bar icon. Status bar icon shows the little GPS icon whenever any of these services use your location. Let's head out of the privacy section of settings and talk about a lighter topic, dark mode. So let's tap display and brightness and then tap dark at the top of the screen. Not only does it look cool, but on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with its localized dimming zones and beautiful OLED display, it also saves a lot of battery life iPad OS 16.1 is a big step forward. But even with its super powerful hardware, I still think the iPad is suffering an identity crisis. It's stuck between being a powerful pro machine and a friendly, easy to use tablet. The pro community isn't happy because even though the power is there, the iPad Pro still can't run pro apps like Final Cut Pro. And casual users aren't happy with Stage Manager, so much so that Apple had to delay iPad OS 16. Where do you think the iPad will fall in Apple's lineup in five years? Will they be running Running pro apps? Will they replace our laptops? Let us know in the comments section below. And after you do, make sure your iPhone is optimized too. That video is appearing on the screen now. Watch that next.